Hey, I like, don't know how to start this video because I just know this is going to be super vulnerable for me. It's going to be therapeutic for me. It's going to be good for me. I can already feel myself like tearing up a little bit, but we got this. You guys get the amazing view. Sadly, I do not. I mean, honestly, like my yard looks great now that I've actually had landscapers come and clean it up. Like it looks amazing, but you guys actually get the view of the water. Catherine, get to it. Okay, coming off the heels of the last video, I wanted to share some things that I have learned in therapy so far. Um, honestly, I'm just like really, really grateful that I found a therapist that I enjoy, that I feel really comfortable with, that just like says the right things to me. And it's really nice because I, I am someone who loves personal development, self-help books, and I have learned a ton that way. And when I had met with a therapist before, she flat out told me, she was like, I don't even understand why you're in therapy. You seem to have all the tools that you need, which I knew just like was not the truth. Like, yeah, I, I know some things, but like at the end of the day, it's like, do I know everything? Absolutely not. And even just reading self-help books yeah it helps me to better understand myself but in reality i think what it did the most was kind of rewiring my brain for positivity for gratitude for certain like mindset shifts and just like things that pointed me on a good positive mindset and direction with just like my life in general and like realizing like I do have control over some things as well as like there's a lot of things that are outside of my control and how can I release control and like self-help books have been so helpful for almost I would say some pretty surface level stuff like yeah self-help books self-help books go deep but self-help books are not written to me as a person they do not talk to my exact life experiences and one of the greatest values I've gotten from having a therapist I enjoy now is truly understanding why I am the way I am. And it's funny because I'll share a story with her once and then a few sessions later she's like, Catherine, but you realize like this is happening because of this story you shared with me. She was like, you are conditioned and let's get into it. So I want to share some things that I've learned in therapy, especially as a people pleaser, if you are a people pleaser, if you hate letting other people down, man, this is going to be for you. And if you're just curious what I learned in therapy, I mean, just keep on listening slash watching. Stop shooting yourself. <laughs> and I think it was just the way it was phrased. <laughs> that it made me laugh and it has stuck with me ever since that one session we had months ago. Stop shooting yourself. This is something I obviously need to work on. Um, but in that scenario specifically, like why she said that to me was because I was working through something that I had been through. And I was like, you know, if I would have just like set my boundaries, if I would have just shown this person how to treat me, if I would have, and she just like had to stop me part way and being like, stop shooting yourself. Stop saying this is what I should have done or this is what should have happened. She was like, what has happened has already happened. And now you're guilt tripping yourself and you were keeping yourself in that moment, thinking about what you could have done different, what you should have done. When in reality, it's like, what are you going to do now to prevent something like that from happening in the future? Or how are you going to help yourself through that in a better way in the future if it does happen again? And I feel like that's such a simple concept of like, you can't live your life in like shoulds and what ifs but stop shooting yourself. I immediately after that session, I went to Instagram and I shared it on my Instagram stories because I was like, dang, <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> but I just like loved the way that was worded. Okay, you're a sponge. I've heard this quote before that says, if you give me a kid until they're five, I don't even remember what it was. Oh my gosh, now I totally forget. But basically, like, you can mold someone into whatever person you want them to be by a very, very young age. Like, kids are sponges. They learn a lot very, very quickly. But what my therapist explained to me is, like, 
Yeah, you're a sponge from the beginning. Especially to your parents, you're a sponge from the beginning. But that sponge also doesn't stop. You are going to continue to be a sponge your whole entire life. You are going to take these circumstances, these situations, these traumatic events, these good memories, these bad memories, you are going to absorb it and it is going to mold you into who you are. But at some point, you are going to get stinky, <laughs> you're gonna get smelly, you're gonna be soggy, you're gonna be weighed down, and sometimes you need to wring yourself out, start fresh, and realize the people in your life you need to put on a raincoat around so that they are not being absorbed into your pores as a sponge. And as well as like situations and, um, I, I feel like that's harder to know of like, okay, I need to put my raincoat on in this situation, but it's like, almost not allowing yourself to be as absorbent as you were as a kid, or if someone has continuously let you down or continuously hurt you, it's like no longer allowing yourself to absorb any of that if that person has to stay in your life. I mean, cut the person from your life. I don't friggin' know what the situation is for you, but like, I don't know. Like I've, I've always known that, yeah, you're a sponge as a kid, but, I especially am someone where I'm like, okay, how can I learn from this situation? Like if this has happened to me once, how can I learn from it and never let it happen again? And even sometimes like I take the trauma and the events that happen in my loved one's lives and I'm like, how can I learn from this? Like if I am witnessing this, like how can I learn from this and how can I implement the changes that I need to make within my own life? And at the end of the day, there's some things that like we shouldn't be absorbent towards. And I feel like I'm absorbent towards everything, <laughs> which is not great. It's really, it's not good. Um, so I, that's something I like really, really need to work on is how to not be as absorbent and how to almost like realize the situations that like I should absorb and learn from and change from compared to other situations where it's just like, and it is what it is, you know? Does that make any sense? Back to the train of thought of, I am the way I am because I was conditioned to be this way. So, I don't know, I, it's an interesting thought of like, obviously you are born with your own unique personality, your own unique traits, your own likes, desires and stuff, but, the way you were raised and the situations and events that have happened to you over time mold you into the person that you truly are. And there's a few things that like when I went into therapy, I was like, oh, like, I'm, I just am this way. Like I just, I am, I wrote down some specific examples of like things that I have, I have now realized the root cause as to why I do this. The first one, I take blame for everything. Even if there is literally no fault on my side, I will find a way to blame myself and give the other person grace. Now, I don't think it's a bad trait that I am very, very good at giving people grace, but there are certain situations where it's like, I can talk myself into thinking that I was the cause of everything. <laughs> like every little thing, I will find a way to blame myself when in reality there is absolutely no blame to be placed on me. So that's one of them. Um, why I accepted what I did in my last relationship, we're not gonna dive into that, but I thought it was one thing. If you guys listen to the podcast, you would know a little bit more there, but I really thought it was one thing. And now as, as I'm working through therapy, I'm like, holy shit, it's, that is so, deep it goes so far beyond and then the other one I have on here is not necessarily like why I am the way I am but I have a better understanding as to why I started my brand in the first place which is interesting because I thought I knew why I started my brand and I've shared my story so many times of like in college I had a pretty traumatic event happen to me and I just like I was in a really really low bad place I did not think I was gonna make it to 30 I decided to take control of my life made a list of things I wanted to change one of them being my career I decided to start my blog and it's like blown up from there yeah that's that, that's kind of the reason but at the same time it's it's so much deeper than that um, my whole life I don't know why I just said my, <laughs> my whole life, I have been searching for acceptance. I have been searching for my place to feel at home, to feel loved, to feel seen. 
And it's interesting because I've had this conversation with Cameron about like, why do we feel so comfortable talking to a camera? Like talking to thousands of people online that do not know us when it's sometimes like, it's harder to talk to like family, friends, people you actually know. Like I feel my most comfortable when it's just us. And realizing why that is, um, as well as the fact of like, I have been using this platform as a way to find people that accept me and love me, ah, is just crazy because it's not something you should do. Like, I would not recommend other people turn to the internet to find that. Um, and I read this book a while back. I've recommended it a few times to you guys, but oh my gosh, what is it? It's a 40 day challenge. Oh my gosh, now I'm forgetting what the book is called. Unlock your potential or something. I'll link to it down below. I still have the book. I know exactly what one it is. I just like, I'm forgetting right now, but it's a 40 day challenge. And every single day you read a chapter and you work through something. And in that book, I realized that like all of my life I've been trying to find acceptance and I've been trying to find peace. And now it's bringing me back full circle because I'm pretty sure I read that in 2017 or 2018. Like it's been a while. But now that I'm like going through therapy and I'm working through some of these things, it's almost like a full circle moment of like, oh my gosh, that has never been more true. Or just like understanding that even then I was on the right path of like what I have been looking for my whole life. And it helps you to create this purpose statement. So the purpose statement I created then was my purpose in life is to accept myself and find peace in helping others do the same. And damn, if I would have just like gone harder on that, you know, if I would have, and here I am, I'm shooting myself, man. I'm freaking shooting myself, but I, it's been really, really hard for me to accept myself. And in therapy, I'm learning why. And it's, it's been good for me. Okay. Uh, and then the biggest one for people pleasing. This is something I said, I think it was the first session I had with my therapist or maybe the second. It was, I think it might have been the second. I said, I don't like upsetting other people or letting other people down. And my therapist immediately said, so instead you're upsetting yourself and you're letting yourself down. And I've shared this piece of advice online so many times, and I don't know why I never fucking took it to heart, but you only have you for the rest of your life. And if you are constantly letting yourself down just to keep other people happy, or just to keep other people in your life, it's not worth it. And that's something I need to hear. I know editing that back, I'm going to be like, ooh, yeah, no, you're right. It's just, <sighs> I have again become so conditioned. I've gone through a lot that has made me incredibly strong. And I can hear deer walking through the woods over there. <laughs> I, I hit a breaking point the other week where... I just realized like, holy fuck, like I've just had to be strong for so long and it's almost crippling me to the point where like, I just want to be weak for once and not even like weak, but just like, I, I want to collapse. I want, I want to feel soft. I want to feel small. I don't want to have to be confident and strong and all of these things. Like, I don't want to have to be this way but I feel like I have to because, because I do, you know? And I have had people in my life that almost just expect me to be strong. And I allow them to treat me as a punching bag. And I don't say shit, 
because for one, I don't want to let them down. I don't want to upset them. But I also know how much I can fucking handle. And I don't know if they can do the same. As well as, in turn, I think about my character all the fucking time. All the time. Your actions and your words matter. And the person I am, like, you know, I can sleep at night. <laughs> I, I am proud of the person that I am because of the way I've handled myself in really, really tough situations. It doesn't matter how much someone wants to punch me and beat me down. I will never turn my back and do the same. I will never. And that's not, to me, a weakness. I need to do better at setting my boundaries and not allowing myself to be a punching bag for one. But I am proud of myself in the way that I have continued to handle those situations. But looping back to the, I don't want to upset other people and let other people down, so I'm upsetting myself and letting myself down. It is something we are going to work on this year. <laughs> something I really, really do need to work on. Because that's not something I want for myself. You know, and then I fall back on the like, well, I can handle it. <laughs> I'm like, it's fine. It's totally fine. I can handle it. But that's not, that's not fine. That's not good. <laughs> it's so not good. <sighs> Yeah, I really, I didn't expect to like cry so much immediately, but at the same time, kind of not because as I'm talking through this to you guys, I'm also like talking to myself and I'm like talking myself through it. Um, so one of the reasons why I wanted to film this video is because of something my therapist said. Um, we were talking about like how much I share online and how much I don't share online and I even like referenced back to my ex and when I went through that and I waited months before I ever shared anything and even then like I, I it was like a full year before then I shared even more and she was like why do you keep protecting these people and my immediate response was I'm not so much protecting them as I am protecting myself because the more I open a tiny door, then the more questions I get. And it's a way to keep my privacy, it's a way to keep my peace, and like, especially when I'm struggling with something personally, if I then come online and it's like constant questions about it, it makes it so much harder. And a really good example of that is the closing story with my last house, okay? I opened the door a tiny bit and I shared that something happened. Every single week in my Wednesday q and I still get questions about the closing story. Like, when am I going to share the closing story? What happened with the closing story? And even, like, the crazy-ass assumptions I got of, like, what happened. Like, someone created this whole entire storyline about how my ex was never bought out of my house. Like, my ex was very much so bought out of that house. Like, I shared a whole vlog of, like, the closing day of buying him out. Like, it was done. Um, but when I open a door a little bit, you guys want more and more and more. And it makes sense because I'm starting a little narrative. I'm starting a storyline. So you want like the closing to the storyline. And it's the same thing of like bringing people on my YouTube channel and like why I decided to keep dating so private is because if I introduced you guys or even like told you about like the dates and stuff I was going on, it's like some people, I'm not going to say all of you, but some people would want an end to the storyline. They would want to know what happened. And I'm not avoiding my closing story because I'm protecting the now owners of the house. I am doing it to protect myself. Not from getting more questions from you guys, so this is like in turn a different thing. Um, because I think if I share the story, the questions would stop. It's more so I'm protecting myself from them. I do not trust them. I do not think they are good people from what they have done to me. And the reality is they obviously know my name. They have my phone number. 
which I fucking hate and I tried to avoid, but there was, <sighs> anyway, um, the worst part of all though is the fact that they actually know where I live, which is the most insane invasion of privacy. And how they even found out what house I bought is just disturbing. The fact that they told me that they know what house I bought is alarming. And I am afraid if I do share something online, they are going to try to come for me in some way. And I just do not want them sending anything to my house. I do not want them showing up on my doorstep and it is just better for me to keep that door effing closed. So it's closed. I'm, I'm not gonna share the closing story Honestly, they were just like really not nice people. Yeah, I feel like just talking to you guys has helped me to take back like some of my power in a sense. Um, and hopefully this helped with someone. Whether you're like, F man, I have been shooting myself all over the place. And maybe you're like, dang, I am letting myself down just because I don't want to let other people down. I doubt I probably helped you to figure out why you are the way you are because you are conditioned to be this way. That's something like, definitely speak to a therapist because the way she just like connects the dots of some things, I'm like, you're a genius. <laughs> I would have never thought of that, but you are so smart. And it's been, it's been really, really good for me. So if you guys want to get started with therapy, highly recommend. I, um don't really have anything else to say so thanks for letting me ramble and be very vulnerable in this video it's actually really really hot outside oh my gosh there's deer over there too and I am sweating I think because I've been vulnerable um so I'm gonna go thank you for watching I'll catch you guys next week with a vlog that will be a little bit more exciting because I do have like just some baby update stuff for you guys. So, see you then.